So let's start. So first, I would like to thank Hongju for organizing such wonderful online conference and also for inviting me to speak here. So today I'm going to talk about uh, index estimates for CMC surfaces in general three dimensional Riemannian manifolds. And this is a joint work with uh, Nicola Alex. So I will put the uh, contents into two videos. Uh, in the first video, I will introduce some uh, backgrounds and some uh, classical results from history. And in the second video, I will discuss the result we obtained recently, as well as the proof. If time permits, I will also talk about um, some applications and its connection to isoparametric problems. So now let's start uh, the first part. Uh, for simplicity, I will just uh, restrict the discussion in two dimension. Uh, suppose we have a two-sided closed surface sigma. Closed means compact without boundary in a subdomain of a three-dimensional three Riemannian manifold. Uh, we consider a one-parameter family of different morphisms. So uh, this will change the area of surface sigma. Uh, if we differentiate the area, we will get a, a first variation of formula, which is just the integration of divergence x uh, over sigma. And with the field x, is just uh, the differentiation of uh, phi t. And on sigma, we can always decompose this vector field into a uh, tangential part and normal part. Then we can rewrite the above formula uh, into two parts. And for the tangential part, because of the surface is closed, uh, this integration zero, then we will end up with uh, this common uh, expression that involves in the product of mean culture vector and this uh, variational vector field. So basically the not the tangential part, uh, the tangential part doesn't change the area. So we can just uh, uh, restrict our discussion uh, in the space of normal variations. And since our surface is two-sided, we can always uh, identify the, uh, the section of normal bundles with the scalar function on the surface. Uh, we can write vector field X uh, by U times nu, and nu is the uh, unit normal vector. Then the first variation of formula uh, has uh, a scalar form, which is just uh, the speed function U times the mean curvature, then taking integration over sigma. So with this formula in hand, we can define minimal surface. We say sigma is a minimal surface in a three-dimensional uh, manifold if either the mean curvature is zero, so it's a trace of second fundamental form, or we say it is a critical point of area function uh, with uh, any variations. And similarly, we can define a uh, CMC surface. So we say sigma is a surface with constant mean curvature if either the mean curvature is a constant uh, positive constant, we can always choose a, a normal uh, vector uh, field such that this constant is positive. Always say it is a critical point of area function, but restricted to uh, normal variations that preserve in closed volume. Equivalently, uh, that is, the speed function has, has mean value zero, has integration zero uh, on sigma. And hereafter, we call uh, such variations, uh, admissible variations. So now let me uh, explain a little bit why uh, preserving enclosed volume is equivalent to this uh, uh, this integration being zero. So for simplicity, uh, let's let sigma bound a domain omega. That is to say, sigma is the boundary of omega. Uh, then, if the variation changes the area of sigma, it also changes the, air, uh, the volume of omega. Then if you differentiate, uh, the derivative is just the integration of u. So if u has integration zero, then that means the enclosed volume doesn't change along the variation. Okay, that simply is uh, volume preserving. Uh, on the other hand, we can also define CMC surfaces with constant mean culture C to be uh, a critical point of area functional FC. 
So Fc is defined to be the sum of area sigma plus a positive constant C times uh, the enclosed volume. So if you differentiate this uh, function Fc, uh, then it's not hard to see that this derivative is just this uh, uh, integration. Then simply sigma with constant mean coverage C can be thought of as a critical point of functional Fc uh, with respect to any variation, right? So not restricted in any smaller class. Then with critical point in hand, we can start to calculate the second variation of area. So the second derivative equals to uh, this uh, well-known expression, which involves the gradient of U uh, and the Ricci curvature uh, of MB manifold acting on the surface in the direction of normal vector field. And A squared is just a length of second fundamental form. And this, this uh, second derivative induces a quadratic uh, form that acting on scalar functions. And by, integri by integration by parts, uh, we can write as uh, integration of u, j sigma u uh, over sigma. So j sigma is the standard uh, uh, Jacobi operator on, on the surface sigma. And there's a simple fact to keep in mind is if we choose u to be uh, constant one, then this second this quadratic form is always negative if the ambient reach coverage is positive. So it simply simply means that uh, for minimal surface in a three manifold with positive reach coverage, any variation will decrease the area. Okay. Then we can define the index of minimal surface we denote, uh, denoted by this uh, notation is just the maximal dimension of a subspace of the function space on which the index form is negative definite or equivalently, it's just the number of negative eigenvalues uh, of the Jacobi operator G sigma. And when, when the index is zero, we say the sigma is the stable or minimal surface, okay? And from the spectral geometry point of view, uh, this operator J sigma has a discrete increasing spectrum that goes to uh, positive infinity. And every eigenvalue, lambda k, has a standard uh, expression. So it's a infimum of uh, Rayleigh quotient. And, and we, call, we can also use a min max characterization. And here the infimum is taking over all smooth functions that uh, are orthogonal to the first k minus one eigenfunctions. Uh, phi, uh, psi one to uh, psi k minus one. And I'll note that the lambda one is always uh, simple because of the uh, uh, current nodal domain theorem. And when sigma is compact, uh, this index is always finite. And geometrically speaking, the index uh, measures uh, the number of independent directions in which uh, uh, one can deform the surface to decrease its area to the second order. So it's it's like the most index uh, for a function uh, with, uh, with, uh, of multi-variables uh, at a critical point. So it's just the number of directions that the graph of the function is decreasing. The only difference here is that we are dealing with uh, infinite dimensional space. And similarly, we can also define the index of CMC surfaces. So it's similarly, it's just the maximal dimension of a subspace of the function space with additional condition that the function has mean value zero, uh, has integration zero, and in which the index form is negative definite. Okay, so we just count the dimension. And similarly, we have a operator L sigma, which is a normalized uh, Jacobi operator. And this operator also has an increasing uh, spectrum and every eigenvalue has same uh, characterization. But here the infimum is taking over all smooth functions uh, with mean value zero uh, that are orthogonal to the first k minus one eigenfunctions. Then uh, we can say that index of a CMC surface, we usually call a weak index. 
and denoted by this notation. That is just a number of uh, negative eigenvalues of the operator L sigma. And on the other hand, we can define the strong index uh, by this notation to be uh, for a CMC surface with constant mean curvature C to be simply the index of a functional FC that right? we just defined before. So if you differentiate FC twice, uh, you will get a similar quadratic form. Okay, so we can just say uh, the strong index is the number of negative eigenvalues corresponding to the Jacobi operator J sigma. Uh, but this strong index is less geometric than, than the weak index. Because it doesn't mean you decrease this area of the surface. And actually, there is a, a relation between the strong index and the weak index for CMC surface. Uh, they default at most by one. In fact, they have the following uh, inequality. And for the left hand side, for the, for the first inequality, it's kind of trivial because any variation that that, that contributes to weak index also contributes to the strong index. And for the second index, for the second inequality, uh, we can prove like this. We can choose, uh, we can construct a subspace W, which is the span of uh, eigenfunctions with negative Jacobi eigenvalues. Then we can define a linear operator from this subspace to R, uh, defined as follows. Then by using a rank nullity theorem, uh, for example, the dimension of kernel T plus the dimension of uh, a range T, it's actually the, just dimension K. This is the strong index. And the dimension of range is smaller than one. And the dimension of kernel is is better than weak index. Okay, so that's the proof. And uh, one interesting example for uh, for the this weak index and strong index is uh, if you think the equator uh, S two uh, in a unit sphere S three as as a CMC surface with mean curvature zero, it is actually weak, weakly stable but not strongly stable. Okay. And recently, Hong Chong obtained some results uh, on the comparison between this strong index and uh, weak index. Uh, he uh, studied the functional, uh, he used the functional analysis tricks to get some uh, uh, characterizations. In particular, he obtained that the weak index of critical cannoid is three. And critical cannoid is a famous uh, free boundary minimal surface in the unit ball that has uh, strong index four, if you think it is a, a minimal surface. So before we move to the uh, second chapter, I would like to mention uh, that all the con all the definitions can be <coughs> we discussed before can be <coughs> sorry can be adjusted to other settings. For example, we can talk about. Uh, minimal hypersurface and CMC hypersurfaces. We can also talk about compact surface sigma with boundary. So if you think a uh, sigma, partial sigma, as a surface in M and with boundary partial sigma located in a uh, boundary of M, then similarly we can uh, consider variations that, uh, that, that makes the boundary move freely in the boundary of M, we can differentiate the area. Uh, we get the first uh, variation of formula. And if we differentiate twice, we will get a second variation of formula. The only difference from before is now we have, uh, we have to deal with uh, uh, boundary terms, okay? Now here, the eta is the co-normal vector of the surface. And also we can uh, talk about uh, the index in the, case when sigma is non-compact complete minimal surface surfaces or CMC surfaces. We just take a compact supported variations, then take exhaustions of the surface, okay? 
So I would like to put a bit of two remarks here. The first one is that in general, uh, even for explicit minimal surface or CMC surface, the index is uh, not easy to calculate. Uh, and in general, the more complicated topology implies uh, less stability. As you can imagine, if a surface has more genus, uh, then you have more freedom to uh, vary the surface to decrease its area, okay? Then uh, an interesting uh, question in this direction is, uh, can we quantitatively bound the index of a minimal surface or CMC surface uh, in a Riemannian manifold from below or from, uh, uh, from above in terms of the topology of the surface? And honestly, most of the results are regarding the lower bound. So we will be focused on, on this direction. Now let's uh, look at some uh, results from the history. Uh, since there were a lot of results uh, regarding the stability uh, research, uh, uh, I would like to just uh, talk about some high index cases, okay, because that is uh, more relevant to our work. So the first result uh, is to be mentioned, to be mentioned is a Bono's result that, that was generalized by a sulfilator. So the result stated, uh, states that if sigma n is a closed minimal hypersurface in the unit field that is not equated, then you have uh, index bounded below by uh, dimension n plus three. And actually when n equals two, equality holds if and only if sigma is uh, minimal, minimal Clifford torus. And for high dimensional equality characterization, uh, it remains open, um, but uh, it was only proved in some particular cases. For example, if you consider antipodal symmetric minimal hypersurface in the unit field, then the uh, minimal Clifford hypersurface gives the equality, but in general, it remains open. And then in 2006, Rawls uh, applied the coordinates of harmonic forms as a test function for the first time. Actually, before him, uh, Palmer used uh, the, also used the harmonic form uh, to estimate the index of energy function. Uh, so Ross uh, used the same idea and showed that in a flat three torus, uh, any orientable non-flat co compact minimal surface, sigma uh, has index bounded below by uh, 2G minus three over three. Okay. And also, he showed that in R3, uh, any orientable non-flat complete minimal surface sigma has uh, the index bounded below by uh, 2G over three. Then later in 2010, Alexandra Sauber uh, used the same uh, similar idea. He applied the coordinates of a two vector that involves harmonic form. So, uh, uh, let me mention the, this function, uij is a normal vector wedge the harmonic field and product with, uh, with the basis of uh, Euclidean uh, uh, space. So he used this test function uh, and proved that if sigma is a closed minimal hypersurface in the unit field, then the index uh, is bounded below by as follows. And when dimension is two, the lower bound is G over two plus four, G is just genus. And when the dimension is greater than three, the lower bound will involve the first Betty number, okay, as well as the dimension. Uh, in, two, in, in 2014, uh, Chorus and Maximo uh, proved that if sigma is a complete minimal surface in R3, the lower bound is uh, uh, like this. So it somehow improve, uh, improves uh, a result of Ross. Let, let's recall that Ross proved that index uh, is bounded by 2G over 3. The reason is uh, Chorus and Maximo are considered the multi, uh, the ends of the minimal surface. So the R 
is the number of uh, ends. Then later, uh, they improved it to uh, the following bound. And they took uh, uh, the multiplicity of surface into consideration and uh, showed this uh, improve the lower bound. But uh, overall, they used a similar idea as Ross. Okay. Then recently, uh, Chao Li generalized uh, Chodos and Maximos result to high dimension, uh, but for only for minimal hypersurface with finite total coverture and with additional assumption that the principal coverages are different at, at, at least one point. Then the lower bound uh, looks like this. It involves the number of ends and the first betting number of the sigma e bar. Sigma e bar is just uh, the compact compactification of the surface. So um, these lower bounds are unlikely to be optimal. That's a important thing to keep in mind. And in this direction, there's a conjecture made by Shane, um, and Marcus, and Davis. Uh, the, the, the conjecture states, if sigma is a closed minimal hypersurface in MN with positive rich curvature, then the index is bounded below by a uh, constant C times the first petty number. So this constant C uh, is a positive constant right? that purely depends on the dimension N and M being manifold M. So it doesn't depend on the surface sigma. So regarding this uh, conjecture, in 2017, uh, Ambrizio, uh, who is also a speaker in this seminar, together with Calato and Bishop, they proved that if sigma is a closed minimal hypersurface in uh, manifold MN, that can be isometrically embedded in a, a Euclidean space with dimension D, uh, that is always doable because of Nash embedding theorem. And with some uh, extra uh, condition on the embedding, uh, then the lower bound, the index is bounded below by first net bedding number over D times D minus one. So we can choose D to be two N plus one. Uh, then the coefficients purely depends on the dimension N, right? And in particular, they examined uh, the class of uh, compact rank one symmetric space and they showed that this, this space is always satisfy the extra condition. Uh, then that simply means for such spaces, the index is always bounded below by B1 over D times D, mi D minus one. Uh, then they prove this conjecture in this particular uh, uh, class of spaces. And recently, uh, Antoni Song prove that for minimal hypersurface with bounded area, A, uh, then the index is bounded below by C times B1. And here the constant C depending on, uh, the, not only on the dimension, and also depends on the area bound A. So uh, this conjecture remains open uh, in general, okay. And in the case when the surface is CMC uh, surface, uh, the first result that is analogous to Abano's result is proved, was proved by Brazil and Padomo in uh, 2012. They showed that if sigma is a closed non-totally umbilic CMC hypersurface in, in the unit field, then the weak index is bounded by uh, M plus one. Then recently, uh, uh, Cavalcanti and Oliver, they used the idea of harmonic forms and they showed that if sigma is a closed CMC surface of genus G in either uh, Euclidean uh, three-dimensional Euclidean space R3 or unisphere S3, then the weak index is bounded below by G uh, over uh, three plus C. So C is just a constant curvature. And similarly, they also obtained the results for free boundary CMC surface in subdomains of uh, in subdomains with mean convex boundary in above two spaces. So, uh, interesting question is: Can we 
obtain the index bound for closed CMC surfaces or free boundary CMC surfaces. Uh, in general, three dimensional remaining manifolds, uh, if we add some additional uh, con conditions. So this is a result uh, we, uh, we obtained and, and it's, uh, it's in the spirit of Ambrosio, Colato and Ben Sharp's result. Uh, that is the content in the second video.